All right, so would you rather make fast or big profit? You know, that's a good question because a lot of people don't think about this or they might think it's the same thing or they might think there's no such thing as fast profit. Well, I'm here to tell you, would you rather make $1,000 a week or $1,500 every two weeks? Uh, that really shouldn't be a hard question to answer, I would hope. Would you rather have a steady flow of income or be stuck in the mud? Now what we're talking about is when you're selling a car, let's say that example that I had for 2,500, we sold it for 35, you know, that was $1,000 in a week. We sold it pretty quick. Now we could have put it for 5,000 and maybe sold it in a few months, but our profit per day would be a lot lower. In fact, if I had the choice to sell five cars a week and make, you know, 800 to 1,000 a piece or so, you know, four cars every two weeks and make 1500 bucks a piece. I know what I'm picking. I want to sell as many as fast as possible because when it gets to having what other dealers would consider a slow month, we don't have slow months. We always sell 50 plus cars a month. It is inevitable. Now we might sell 49 or 47 in a month, but that's okay too. But when you sell cars that you're trying to make a big profit on, a lot of times you don't get a lot of action on those cars. So you're just waiting for that one buyer to come across. You're just waiting for that one perfect person to come buy your vehicle when you could, you know, cause there's, there's so many vehicles available for that one person that they have their choice. But when you have a great deal, a deal that's the best on the market, you have one car and there's multiple buyers trying to get that one car because they know it's the best deal and they're not gonna find anything better. Now what this means is you have predictable income. You know, some dealers, they might get lucky and sell a bunch of their nice cars and make a big profit or they might not sell any. You know, they think to themselves, are we making any money this month? Are we gonna have a good month? Well, they'll, they'll all sell next month. You know, this is just a slow month. The economy is bad. People don't have money this month. That's just how it goes. No, that's bullshit. Because while they're having what they think is a slow economy month, well, shit, I just sold 65 cars that month, man. You're telling me it's a slow economy? No, I've got all the best deals. So you, as a seller, need to make sure that your car is the best deal in the market and people are getting more value than their money's worth. And that leads to consistency. You know, consistent results beats luck any day of the week and someone named thomas edison you might have heard of him he said i find that the harder i work the luckier i get and that's true this market the market for vehicles is too efficient and what that means is cars are priced for their value there are very few good deals and there are few overpriced deals. You know, most people, they look up the value for their vehicle, whether it's private party or they look at the other ones on the market or, you know, they've sold them before. So they know what they're worth. So they price the vehicle for what they're worth. A lot of people can't find a good deal because everything's just priced for its value a little bit over, a little bit less. And so you can't count on big deals because if you're at the auction, or if you're looking at a vehicle and you're like, man, that's super cheap. That's like too good to be true. Or, you know, if you're at an auction, you're like, man, that car is so cheap. I'm going to bid on it. I didn't check it, but it's cheap. I'm going to buy it. Well, I'm telling you this. The market is too, if nobody's bidding on a vehicle at the auction, there's a reason. And a lot of times the other dealers have checked that vehicle and they're like, man, I'm, that has a knock in the engine. Um, but you don't know that because you didn't check it. So it's cheap to you. And then you buy it and then you lose money because you didn't check it. And the same is for individuals. You know, if you're like, if you see a car on there and it's like a thousand dollars for a $4,000 car, you're like, oh wow, that is too good to pass up. I need to go buy it right now. Well, you might show up and they might've put something in the transmission to make it drive for a day or two, but then it goes out or it was a scam or they didn't have a title or it's a rebuilt title and they didn't tell you until you got there. I'm telling you, 
this market is too efficient. You just got to take your consistent good deals and just bank the profit you can get. Now, there's going to be good deals, of course, because within the overall market, there are many submarkets. And my favorite one is Mustang Cobras, which is um, 2003 to 04 Mustang Cobras. And even the F-150 Lightnings use the same engine. But um, for two years, they made these with a supercharger. There's two years worth, and these are you know these are twenty thousand dollar plus vehicles. My best deal ever was on one of these. Now this is a micro market where, when one of these rolls through the auction, I know in my head that if it has low miles, it's super nice. It's worth anywhere from you know sixteen to seventeen thousand, upwards of twenty to twenty three thousand dollars. I know this because I know the market. But other dealers are going to see that and say, what the hell is going on? That thing is not worth 10000 That's just a Mustang. But they don't know that there are collectors out there ready to plop $20,000 cash for a good version of one of these. So that is a market that is not so efficient because, you know, if one of these rolls across the auction, you best believe I'm in on it. I'm paying up to $15,000. If it has 50,000 miles, it's super clean. No problems. I'm all in for fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars. I'm buying it because I've sold them. And the same for um, you know these F-150 Lightnings. So this is a uh, you know this is a, a truck obviously, but it has the exact same engine. It's supercharged. You know they're worth sixteen to twenty thousand dollars. Same thing. I'm all in. I'm paying twelve thousand dollars for one because I know I'll make four to five to seven thousand dollars. That's just the market for those. So if you get really good at, you know, sub markets like that, you know, you can make a lot of money because if you, let's say you're a flipper, let's say, you know, you just know, like the back of your hand, the BMW M5 markets, you know what they're worth. You know how fast they're sell. You know what to look for. Um, you know everything. So you have an advantage because that market is not as efficient since it's lower volume. That means if you find a good deal, I don't know the market, but let's say you find one for five grand. No problems, all good, all solid. And you're like, oh shit, man, this thing's worth 10 grand all day long, fast. Because every other one sells for 12 to 15. Well, you know, you just find yourself a good deal. And it really, it really can help you to niche down into these little sub markets where there's a low number of vehicles. And so when you have a really good deal, it's the best one available. Now I'll tell you what's really good for those markets, eBay. You know, I've sold my my Cobras on eBay and, you know, supercharged Mustangs, turbo Mustangs, you know, stuff like that. I always get good money on eBay for specialty cars because you're opening up the market to the whole country. And then when you sell on eBay, you know, take 50, 60 pictures, super descriptive. You're, you're going to put like an hour's worth of work into the eBay ad because when you throw it up there, you know, people are going to want it. And the more information, the more comfortable they feel buying from a stranger online. And I recommend if you have an eBay account, I'll make, I'll make a video about this, but you know, sell a shitload of little things for a few months. Just if you got a break even, you know, get your feedback all the way up to at least, you know, 20, 30, 50 plus feedback because that's going to help you sell cars. I know there's a period where I sold just a ton of little stuff online. You know, I was breaking even or losing a little bit on these items, but I got my feedback up over 120 and it's helped me make a lot of money selling cars. Now, when you are selling a car, the first offer is usually the best offer because this is, this especially applies to expensive vehicles, you know, not cheap ones, but like, you know, in that Mustang Cobra, if I pay, let's say I pay $15,000 and I post it for 23, if I get an offer for 19,000 cash, I'm taking it on the spot because Guaranteed, I bet that dude's been sitting around for a while waiting for one to pop up on the market that fits his budget and he sees mine and he's like, hey, I got 19000 right now, I'll buy it. It's what I'm looking for. And if I turn down that deal, well, now this car is off his radar and there may not be any more people in the market for that vehicle. I may just have to wait and hope I can get more. But then two months later, I'm like, shit, I should have took the 19000 man. I can't sell this car for nothing. It happens. Just like in real estate, you know, I see I see sellers all the time. They get an offer on the first day and they think, oh man, there are so many people interested in this house. I'm just going to hold out for more money. 
Well, you don't know that the dude that just made you that cash offer, that's the that's the house he's been looking. That's the exact house in the exact neighborhood that he wants with all the exact features he wants. And he's ready to buy it right now. And you just passed up. So he's on the other houses. He buys a different house in two weeks. And now three months, six months later as a seller, you're not getting any more offers or you're not getting serious offers. Your house hasn't sold. That is a big regret that you didn't take the first offer on the table because you could have taken that offer. You could have moved on with your life and you could have moved to that new city with that new job, but instead you screwed around and didn't. Same with cars. You could have bought another car by now. You could have bought another flip. You could have bought multiple flips. And instead of taking the guaranteed profit, you are giving up all the future profit on future deals that you could have bought just to make a little bit more on the current deal. I could rant about that all day long, but trust me, I've learned that lesson multiple times. Take the first offer that makes the money you want to make.